Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Culture Dose, Art for Wellbeing, a collaboration between the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute. My name's Danielle Galotta, and I'm the Access Programs producer at the gallery, and I welcome past participants to our program and extend a warm welcome to anyone who is engaging with the program for the first time. We'll start our session by starting off with an acknowledgement of country. So we acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute stands. We acknowledge the Gadigal and Bidigal peoples of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. So I'm just going to give a very brief outline on our fortnightly experience where we invite you to take time out for yourself to connect with your own feelings, thoughts, and imagination. In each session, we'll focus on three artworks from the collection of the Art Gallery of New South Wales to create a space and time for you to look, to observe closely, to imagine and respond. We hope you enjoy this experience to read with your body and imagine with your mind. Hello everyone, I'd also like to extend a warm welcome and thank you for joining us on our fourth session of our fortnightly noon sessions of Culture Dose. I'm Catherine Boydell and I'm a professor of mental health at Black Dog Institute. And my program of research uh, focuses on using the arts in the research process to create or produce research data and to communicate and share research findings using visual, performative and literary genres. Culture Dose is based on the Arts on Prescription program, which is a collaboration between Danielle and the Art Gallery of New South Wales and myself and Black Dog Institute. And we found that our research exploring the impact of the Arts on Prescription Arts Engagement program with adults with um, depression showed significant increases in mental health and well-being and in a sense of community inclusion and connectedness at the end of eight sessions of arts engagement. And based on these positive findings, we decided to extend the arts engagement to the broader public in the form of Culture Dose. And I'm going to be moderating the discussion this afternoon. So just by way of a bit of housekeeping, if you could ensure that your video and microphone are off during the session. And you'll be invited to share your responses in the chat box. And you'll see that you have the option of responding to only the panelists, which is Danielle and myself. And I'll be um, engaging with your questions and comments throughout the program. But you'll also have the option to um, select all attendees and panelists if you'd like the entire group to view your comments. We also suggest that you might want to have a pencil, pen, or other materials present during the session in case you'd like to draw, a doodle, and engage in any other creative activity during the session itself. And we also encourage you to, um, to engage creatively following the session as well via our Culture Dose uh, Facebook page and email address. The fourth session is titled An Artistic Vision. And realizing an artistic vision involves the process of experimentation, where materials are transformed to communicate an idea, emotion, narrative, or theme responding to our external or internal world. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Our session for today will focus on three artworks that really present unique artistic visions. Each artist in our selection today has taken time to observe the world around them and to reinterpret in their own style. So we'll transition to our first work.
So I invite you to take time to survey the work. To observe the still life arrangement that we are presented with. You'll notice an arrangement of bottles and jars of different heights and sizes. You'll notice the distinctive tone of each individual bottle. with the great observation and detail that the artist has presented to us. You'll notice the framing with the two orange lilies. Imagine the fragrance that you would smell if you were in, in this presence. Take note of how casually these cut flowers have been placed. They're fresh and organic. One is almost submerged in a tall jar of water, while the other placed into a small bottle. They frame this family of objects. Imagine who these objects may belong to. Have these objects been collected? Have they been purchased? Or they, are they the type of bottles that you might uncover, perhaps when you're renovating, that have been buried for many years? The painting here presents with us perhaps a memory of objects collected and stored. And this is resonated in the reflections. Look closely at the two large brown and dark green bottles. In their surface, we see the reflection and highlight of light, perhaps from a window. And we also see the reflection of the smaller bottles in front. The artist has drawn our attention and our focus to these very everyday objects. 
and elevated them to something much more. We see the beauty in the light. That's not only reflected in the bottles, but we see in the shadows. The pale blue and mauve of the shadow on the tabletop. I invite you to share with us and to think about what sort of collections may you have at home? Are you a collector of any items that you may arrange for people to view or perhaps for yourself? Each of these bottles has been portrayed as a unique individual. If you take note of the bottles in the foreground, they are angled in a particular arrangement. And when I view this work, it brings back memories for me of family photographs or even school photographs with the tallest at the rear and the smallest in front. You may look beyond your screen today at the room perhaps that you're in and you may see small arrangements or collections You may take note of the way the light in your room falls upon them. And folks, we have some comment. Sorry, Danielle, we have some comments um, from the viewers um, from Catherine. Um, some old glass spirit lamps calls us that, that memory. memory. And from Claudia, I collected shells from the walk from Palm Beach to Kirribilli and have them in a bowl on the kitchen table. Hmm. That also reminds me of uh, collecting sea glass, beautiful uh, segments of gorgeous sea glass that have watched, washed up on the ocean and all the beautiful colors that they entail and the way that they reflect light. Um, this, these images really call that up as well. Um, also perfume bottles, particularly some of the, the smaller ones, um, remind me of my mother-in-law's uh, little perfume bottles arranged carefully on her dresser. It's wonderful how humble bottles can be imbued with such memory and associations. When you look at this composition, this arrangement, take note also of the gaps or the negative spaces. So we can see the contrast between the background and the objects. The artist has wanted to make us aware of the shape the form, the individual colours. To show their unique properties. If you were the artist here, 
How would you arrange this composition? Would you add anything, anything else, perhaps from your personal world or your experience? Is there anything here that you would take away? I imagine lids on some of them, Danielle. I noticed that none have a lid and I guess calling back to the perfume bottles, I kind of imagine an elegant uh, crystal lid on some of those objects. So I wonder what the narrative here for some of these bottles are. Perhaps they, the lids have been lost through time. They've gone beyond their utilitarian function now and they become in a way sculptural forms creating art out of the everyday objects that we touch and we feel and we arrange. We have some more comments, Danielle. Um, I think the bottles are so beautiful by themselves. I would take away the flowers and uh, another, I'd fill all of them with flowers to add a bit more color. Mm. It's wonderful to hear different people's perspectives. And I suppose in still life painting, often the inclusion of flowers or fruit suggests the passage of time. We have the, here the organic contrasted with the man-made. We have another comment, I might turn one upside down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like that one perhaps even balance some on top of each other. Roses would give, would give a lovelier smell. I'll take note of that. Calling up the senses. We're all here today looking, taking time out being aware of our body seated and breathing. And what we're also sharing is the vision of the artist. We're looking at what the artist spent many, many hours observing and considering. And the artist has presented this vision for us to take time out and enjoy. Before we move on, I just want to make sure that people have noticed the flicks and of orange that are reflected in the bottles. Having those lilies high up allows these flecks of orange to dance across the bottles. I'm going to share with you the artist and the title of the work. The artist is the Australian artist Lucy Cullerton and the title of the work is The Very Humble Day Lilies. And this work is a gouache painting on paper, 50, 56 centimetres by 76 centimetres. So we can see here the layers of gouache, the fluidity of the texture in one of Lucy Cullerton's still life paintings. And if you're Intrigued by her work, or perhaps familiar with her work, you will know that she spends many, many hours observing, making the everyday quite extraordinary. I'm 
going to move to our second work, which will have a very different tone. So I'll give you a few moments to observe the work, to take note of the varying intensity of colour Taking note of the brush strokes, the layers of paint that bleed into each other and give a particular quality. We invite you to immerse yourself, to imagine walking along the pathway that's before us. To walk along this suburban street, to imagine the time of day For some people, it may be early evening. For others, it could be a very early morning. I invite you to take note of the order the neatly fenced houses, the closed gates, the manicured hedges and gardens, and the impact of the two suburban homes, the impact of the pale pink roof and the pale blue door. The warm yellow light that emits from the windows suggests activity indoors. the family home. We invite you to share with us How would it feel for you to be walking along this pathway? What do you see and what do you hear? We have a comment from Catherine, looks like a storm is coming. And a question about uh, whether or not this is a watercolour. Yes, it is a watercolour and well spotted. So for people who are familiar with watercolour, you can actually see the translucency of the water and the pigment, especially in the bottom part of the painting where you see the effect of the water and the brush. We have a comment from Carla. Uh, it looks hot even with the grey sky. Uh, but there is no outside shade in the garden. Do people just live inside behind closed doors and windows? Mm. Very interesting. And we have another comment, Kyla uh, says, the street and houses look very quiet, not a bird flying by, not a dog or cat. Very uh, interesting comments there, 
and observations. And both observations pinpoint that we don't see any human activity or even animal activity here. There's no pets. There's this, there's this silence here, this stillness. And I think um, Anne has said cooking smells and televisions flickering while the houses swing among the stars. And I guess it speaks to imagining what's going on inside those houses. I really enjoyed the fact that um, Anne mentioned the sky because half of this composition is that evening sky. and the light that's emitted, that warm yellow glow. Complements the pastel pink and the pastel blue. To create this almost eerie mood. Of this quiet suburban street that's ordered neat and very quiet. We have a comment from Claudia. It has made something very beautiful out of something very ordinary. Exactly. And we know the artist here is a type of artist who finds inspiration in their lived experience. So from walking down the street to taking a photograph, to living and observing, taking something as humble as a suburban street, something uneventful, to make it really something elevated and very moody and beautiful. We have another comment. It must be a bright moon up high to cast the shadows that way. Mm. So I do, I get a sense that we're feeling that it's perhaps twilight or evening. And for me, those details like the shadows the detail of the front gate, the detail of the trees really give a sense of, of the artist's stylized, stylization of this scene. I'd like to invite people to share perhaps what they would title this artwork. Where the children used to play. Mm. Behind closed doors. Coming home. Suburban streets. Blank street. <laughs> Dinner time. <laughs> Quiet before the storm. Home is where the light is. Mm. Neighbors. I'd like to ask people to consider how they would represent their own home, whether it's an apartment or a freestanding home. How would you represent the place you call home? What details would you highlight? 
and here, what details would you pull back on? There would be a lot more soccer balls in the front yard. Dogs. The garden would play a big part in representing my home. I find houses with minimal gardens and very structured plants like this unsettling, says Carla. And Catherine, more weeds in the garden. Oh. More cars on the streets, more people. Um, and it would be darker, no ambient light here. Uh, Kai may emphasize welcome into the home and food and shelter and a haven for friends and family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing those comments. More traffic and passers-by. Mm -hmm. The isolation is very interesting in this pandemic. Very interesting how our current con context can influence our reading of work. And the artist here has, again, as I mentioned, has created a very personal stylized approach to depicting this suburban area. And I particularly feel very moved by the restraint here, the use of gray and the pop of color that gives for me a personal sense of, of hope and, and those small moments of joy. I'm going to share with you the, the artist and the title. So it's a watercolour um, by the artist Noel McKenna and it's very humbly titled Lilyfield Twilight from 1998. And as one of the participants uh, shared, it is a watercolour. So it's pencil and watercolour, 57.5 by 74.5 centimetres. And in this particular piece, Noel McKenna again has created an artwork where it was, it's perhaps about what he's left out that creates that very intense and poetic mood for us to view and share and, of course, imagine. We have a comment from Kai, Danielle. Um, funny, I was just thinking of Noel McKenna, but had no idea this was his work. I am used to his pet and animal drawings. Yes, and when somebody shared that they would have more animals in their artwork, I thought, well, yes, I think Noel McKenna um, is very well known for his animal, his horse, dogs and cats. But here, unusually, it's devoid of any um, pets or um, activity. Interestingly, this work won a watercolour prize um, at the Art Gallery of New South Wales um, in 1998 and it's in our collection. Again, it's one of those works that every time you experience the work, you really do share in this artist's unique vision or unique observations of the world and has a very distinct style
we'll transition to our third work here, which will be, again, a, a, a change in mood and pace. So I invite you to take a few moments to observe closely, to take notice of this artwork, this sculptural piece. And I might, before we go through our observations, is perhaps ask you, what are you struck by first when you're presented with this artwork? It is quite fanciful. A happy bird. The colorful stripes reminds me of fun socks. His eye the bright colors, colors and textures. Thank you for sharing that, those comments. It's quite a curious piece. We see a bird in profile. A seagull, in fact. He seems confident. Who's standing tall, perhaps even proud. As mentioned, people can see the bright colours Perhaps what struck you first was that large red pom-pom upon the seagull's head. Followed by the lovingly knitted and stitched covering or costume. We have some other comments, Danielle. Um, Angela says, it seems uh, farcical to me. Uh, Carla, I love it, so much fun. Uh, Catherine, must be breeding season, a showy cockbird. Definitely. This bird has been transformed. There's an element here of of not only joy, of excitement, of being different. Of we, have a oh, sorry. Sorry. we have a couple more comments coming in. Uh, he is dressed up for his birthday party. Um, and another, Anne says, off to rob a bank in a red balaclava. No witness could identify that bird once he loses the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> The bird looks very confident and proud of his outfit. I think it's interesting because I also think of seagulls as being sort of a rather boring, dull gray bird that, you know, comes around when it's time for rain. Um, fun and frivolity. Definitely. Especially with those streamer type protrusions of hot pink almost like something you would have at a Mardi Gras parade. This is definitely a bespoke costume or outfit. And it is quite fanciful, as people have mentioned. But I suppose here the artist is drawing our attention to perhaps a side of humanity, 
of how we can transform ourselves. How we can put on a mask or even fashion or a costume to reinvent ourselves. Perhaps it's the next, next stage of evolution. Instead of natural selection, personal selection. If we take note, the artist here has used very tactile materials. Thread, yarn, wool, tinsel, to knit and to sew this costume. To create almost a, a skin covering perhaps to restrict the bird. It can no longer fly wearing this. Sandra says, I think of gulls as confident and pushy, noisy. So it is not a surprise that a gull would be proud and out there, not afraid to be seen. It's a wonderful comment. The artist here is an artist who really celebrates the creation of handmade work using fabric, thread, felt, the different textures, often the work that we might associate with craft, or work that we might do at home. Traditionally work that maybe have a focus on for women. And the artist here has transformed these humble materials into something challenging, something very contemporary and full of joy. Our focus for today has been celebrating an artist's vision, the unique approaches that each artist develops through their practice that draws our attention to a new way of seeing the world and understanding the world. going to invite you to title the work because this particular artist does have a way with titling her creations and her sculptures and installations. Look at me, capital M, capital E, <laughs> dressed to impress. They're very appropriate titles. Pretty bird, oh, party bird, sorry. Oh. Let's party. Where is the party? Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I'll reveal the artist. Some of you may be familiar with the artist. So the artist is the Melbourne artist Louise Weaver and poetically 
The title of this work is Guido Valdez, Vendetta for Love. So again, this fanciful, perhaps Latin lover, this passionate seagull who's definitely out there. <laughs> you may be aware of the materials here that are, are listed. Hand crocheted lamb's wool. Do I need to move this? Lurex, plastic, cotton thread over a taxidermic Pacific garm. So the materials here are non-traditional uh, materials. We've got plastic, wool, and most bizarrely, the remains of a living animal that has been transformed and lives again The artist Louise Weaver presents a unique artistic vision in the contemporary art world where she transforms, reinvents and poetically titles installations and recontextualizes animals that we are familiar with to challenge our thoughts of the natural world. So our session today has looked at three very different contemporary art practices. The first work by Lucy Cullerton was an observational piece in gouache that focus on an arrangement of everyday objects that are imbued with meaning through the arrangement. The second work by Noel McKinna was a moody watercolour that focused our attention on the suburban and everyday, but elevated it to something greater. And our third work the vision of Louise Weaver of this sculptural piece that challenges our approach to nature in a very fun and fanciful way. So we're going to invite you today to share with us which of the artworks resonated with you most today. and which perhaps spoke to you more. And we'll see in a few moments how these works resonated. I might just bring that down. Oh, so that's very interesting. So 47% of people who, who did the poll resonated with the moody and poetic suburban scene. Hmm. Well, I hope that the session today has really opened up your experience to taking time to appreciate and to become aware of the visions that artists present to us. So we'd like to invite you to create a response to the artworks or themes explored today. So your response that you could share with us could take the form of a quick sketch of an arrangement perhaps of objects that you might have at hand or in your space at the moment. You may like to do a drawing of your local environment or capture an image on your iPhone or even share with us a piece of writing exploring the theme 
of your own personal artistic vision. The avenues that you can share with us are through the email for Culture Dose at blackdoginstitute.org.au or via the connecting social media Facebook pages. On the Art Gallery of New South Wales, we will post an art set of these three artworks so you can explore and revisit more closely at a later time. And we also invite you to perhaps share these images and lead someone through a guided viewing experience when convenient. So on behalf of the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute, I'd like to thank you for taking time out to share in these artistic visions. We trust that you've had time to be present, to be aware of your body, of your breath, and to become aware of the unique visions that artists share about the world and that we can take inspiration in the quiet and every day. A survey will pop up in your browser in a few moments and we encourage you to share your experience so we can hear about how you've been engaged. Our next session in a fortnight will focus on the theme immersed in nature and we hope to see you then. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks.